Hey guys, welcome back. It's IT Ops Guy. Well, uh, from where we left off, you can see I've got four virtual machines. Every single one of them are turned off right now. Um, but I want to go ahead and start setting up my domain controller. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and um, connect to this box and then go ahead and start it. And let's get this guy going. Um, because I want to have a domain for my SolarWinds environment. And right now, all I've got is a local box. And we should have to remedy that. So I've got my box coming up here. The first things I'm going to do, just really pretty simple. Um, I'm going to configure this server. And some of the first things that I want to do is uh, change the time zone to my time zone. I am in Arizona, negative seven. Uh, so let's go ahead and take care of that. Um, I also want to uh, give it an IP address. I don't want to use DHCP. So let's go ahead and set a static IP address. So my local subnet, 192.168.167, and then I'm going to give it 210. And I'm going to say to get out to the internet, use dot one. That's fine. Um, and for its DNS, we're going to use Verizon and Google. Um, but I also actually want it to use itself. So let's, let's do this. Let's uh, give it the loopback IP address as well. So there we go. So it should have an IP. And to keep things simple, uh, I'm going to disable IPv6. So let's just go ahead and disable that. Um, that'll make life pretty easy. Um, can't can't be difficult at that point. Um, so we've got that. I'm going to change its name. Uh, so its name is DC01. We're going to leave it in the work group and it's going to ask me to restart the computer. Um, that's fine. I think from there we've got remote management's enabled. I don't need that. Don't need that. We're fine there. Um, I will install Windows updates, but we'll just kind of force that. So let's go ahead and um, restart the box. And this should go pretty quick. And the reason that I'm restarting the box and, and doing it in this fashion is I want it to already have that name. Um, because whatever name we do, that's what it's going to register as. And I don't want it to be something funky. All right, and so if we go back to configure, now we should have the values we expect, right? DC01, it's got a static IP, we're in Arizona. That's really all that I need right now. Um, and so now I can go to uh, add roles or features. Uh, this used to be a command line thing. You could do DC promo, and I, I think Microsoft still, still even allows you to do that <laughs> let's see what it says DC promo oh no relocated in server manager okay active directory domain services perfect so we are in the right spot anyway and we're gonna go active directory domain services we'll just say add features next next and it's gonna say hey what are you wanting to do here? You're going to create a domain controller. You know you can do this in Azure. That's really nice of them to tell us that. We're going to say restart if you need to. Um, and then we'll say go ahead and install. All right, that installation's gone pretty quick. And you can see that um, the installation is complete, but now it says configuration is required. The installation succeeded, so I'm going to go ahead and say close. And now we can see on this box that 
we've got we've got stuff to do. Um, so post deployment, we need to promote this server to a domain controller. So I'm going to go ahead and click this, and it's going to ask us what we want to do here. If we want to just add this domain controller to an existing domain or an existing force, we're going to create a whole new one. Now I don't like to type a lot, uh, especially when it comes into domain names. I'm not going to put you know YouTube slash shops guy. Like I'm just not going to do it. And so um, what we're going to do is we're going to keep this simple, uh, and we're going to use x dot local simple 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 simple. And let's see what we got here. Uh, the functional level, we'll just uh, 2016, 2016, that's fine. Um, this server is going to be the DNS. Uh, and we need to create a secure restore mode password. Um, so I am going to do that. And hopefully I don't make a typo. Doesn't look like it. Um, specify DNS dele delegation. Uh, Snickerdoodle. So we might need to create a DNS server too, but that's okay. So let's let's just give it give it a second here. All right, it found the NetBIOS name. We're just going to use X, which will make life simple. Um, so let's go ahead and say next. Next, we'll choose our paths. Um, we're going to keep all the defaults. There's no need in the world to change that, um, especially in a lab environment. Maybe in a production environment, you've got something different going on. That's completely up to you, but we're just playing around here. All right, so it's doing all the prerequisite checks. Um, it looks like it's not happy about a couple of things. Just threw out a couple little warnings. That's okay. Um, really don't care because this last line says everything was successful. So we'll go ahead and say install. My opinion, it should say configure. But that's all right. We'll let it do its thing. Now you can see it's creating all the objects. Setting up just a, a blanket kind of default uh, domain policy. And you can see that I'm about to be signed out. Uh, so let's go ahead and click close. And now what we should be greeted with, once the machine reboots, is we should be in the X domain. So let's take a look and see what that, what that looks like and what that entails. Now the user I created the domain with, that is going to be the very first user of the domain so it's gonna move you know it's it's still technically a local account but it is also now a domain account you can see that we're applying some computer settings this will be that default domain policy all right so it looks like we are ready to sign in now you can see down here it says sign in to X now X is the name of my domain so I should be able to sign in with administrator that's the default user and then the password and there's my very first sign in uh, to the domain controller as a domain user um, and and kind of the very first thing that I want to do uh, even though this is a lab, it's still going to end up driving me nuts, is I want to um, change the username of the administrator account. I hate the fact that it is administrator, uh, and my conscious, conscience will not allow me to um, keep that. So we are going to change this right here to a different name and you can see I've got a different name here um, so we're gonna just use um, ops guy that's gonna be our logon name
Okay, are you absolutely sure you want to do this? Yes, I am sure. Wow. All right. There we go. All right, so now we have Ops Guy. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just sign out of this administrator account. We're going to sign in as the new name. Um, so here we go. So we're going to go Ops Guy. Boom. All right, perfect. So now we're in a pretty good spot. I'm um, just checking everything about the server. Now you can see domain is x.local. Um, so we got a firewall that's enabled. We've got an IP. We've got all this stuff. So we are um, good to go as far as our domain is concerned. We should actually be able to now join another box to the domain. Um, so let's test that out and then um, I'm not going to bore you with all the details uh, of doing the other three, but let's let's just do one and let's make sure that um, our domain is actually good to go. So we're going to start up what will become the SolarWinds server. And let's go ahead and sign in. This is with our local account. And what we're going to do is give it an IP address. And we're going to set it up just like the other. So let's go ahead and come in here. Let's right mouse click, go properties, TCP IP version 4. And we're going to use a static address. That static address, 192.168.167.220. Uh, 192.168.167.1 will be my gateway. Now here I want the IP address of my domain controller. So 192.168.167.210. And then my second DNS can be out on the internet. Let's use Google's 8.8.8.8. .8 Again, I'm going to take out TCP IP version 6. And now if I go to a command prompt on this server, and I ping x.local, it should resolve. And it does. You can see it resolves to .210, which is the IP address of my domain controller. So we know networking is good, and at a minimum, NetBIOS is working. Um, so let's go ahead and change uh, our time zone to Arizona, because we don't do daylight savings time here. And let's go ahead and we're going to change both the name and the domain all at the same time. Um, so here we're going to go change SW01. And I want to change the domain to x.local. Now what I like to do is just move my mouse along this window to, to make sure that it's still working. You can see here. So let's go x slash ops guy. And let's put in our password. Now you can see that we have been welcomed to the x.local domain. And it's going to tell us we need to restart. So we'll go ahead and restart now. And the process for the other two virtual machines is exactly the same. I'm going to change the time zone. I'm going to um, give it a static IP address. And then I'm going to um, give it a name and, and join it to the domain. All of those things don't change. Uh, so you don't need to stick around for them. If you need to see it again, just replay the video. Simple as pie. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I will catch you on the next video when we start to set up some group policies um, for our future SolarWinds installation. And until then, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time.